So welcome everybody to our town hall meeting tonight. Uh, as you know, this is a follow-up to our gathering uh, two weeks ago. Thank you so much for joining us again. Really appreciate it. Tonight's focus will be on building interreligious interreligious understanding. And I'll pass the mic on to Buzz. You're muted, Buzz. Good evening and welcome to our town hall on interreligious understanding between Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, all of which trace themselves back to Abraham, hence the term Abrahamic religions. Many of us, myself included, lack accurate information about other religions. This can lead to negative misconceptions, fear, and animosity toward other religions and their members. In recent years, the United States has seen a huge increase in Islamophobia and anti-Semitism. Tonight, St. Perpetua is hosting this town hall, the purpose of which is to promote better understanding and respect between, among the Abrahamic religions, which are in order of seniority, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. The format will be as follows. I will pose a question to the presenters, which they will answer as briefly as possible. And once the presenters have responded, we will go into breakout rooms for 15 minutes where attendees can ask questions, respond to the question themselves, or engage in dialogue. And there are three questions. We have a distinguished slate of presenters tonight. Rabbi Peretz, Kwari Ibrahim, and our very own Deacon Dan Navarez. Now, I'm sure all of you have heard of the title Imam, but I suspect that very few of you have heard of the title Kwari. A Kwari is an Imam who has memorized the entire Quran in Arabic. That is quite an achievement. Okay, Christoph, slide off. So let's get started. Just prior to the period that we refer to as the Common Era, there lived a Jewish religious leader, scholar, and wise man by the name of Hillel. He was once challenged to explain the Torah while the questioner stood on one foot. Hillel met the challenge in two sentences. So I would like to pose the same challenge to each of our religious representatives. Please explain the essence of your religion in one or two sentences. Following your responses, we will break out into breakout rooms for discussion by all participants. Rabbi Peretz, as the representative of the oldest of the three religions, would you answer first, followed by Kwari, Ibrahim, and then Deacon Navarez? Sure. Um, I suppose that's the first right answer. Yes, I will. <laughs> First, I'd like to note that Hillel was an immigrant from Babylonia who, who came to the, to the land of Israel, um, as you said, before the common era, but he's, his formal title is Hillel Habavli, Hillel the Babylonian, which sets a whole context of someone who's an immigrant from another place, coming to a new place, bringing knowledge from one place to another, and Right now, I'm, I'm coming to you actually a representative from Jewish Family and Community Services of the East Bay. We are active, actively helping to resettle Afghan refugees from approximately the same neighborhood um, into, into actually your neighborhood, uh, most, most in, in, the con in the Concord area. So that, that's just putting Hillel in, in, in context. 
So I will say, since you since um, you mentioned Abraham, going to Abraham as a figure, um, not an historical figure alone, but as as a paradigm figure. If Judaism grows out from anything, it grows out from this response to the Abrahamic or Abraham's personal revolution, his personal journey. He also goes from one place to another, from Ur of the Chaldees into Canaan. We actually don't know why he goes, except that he was told to, or he, th he says he was told to. But most important about Abraham, who as an Hebrew, which is the Canaanite word for immigrant, Abraham himself with Sarai, his wife, embarks on a jury of discovery. That's the key move, that Abraham saw the verb attached to Abraham more than any other verb is he looked up and Abraham saw. Abraham watched. Abraham saw the mountain, the land that I will show you. All Abraham. Moses, yak, 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 yak. Talk, 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 talk. Abraham sees things. And he sees things and he wonders about them. And he comes to a discovery in his journey that the little gods of his past, and it's to call it idolatry is not helpful. That's a that's a that's a downer. But the little, the small gods of small people's imagination and of also small territories could not be as true as one in which everything is underneath. In other words, everything is under heaven. Everything is under God. And if you truly believe that, you would have to act differently with the others. If you truly believed that all were under the same God, that would cause you to behave radically different differently from your neighbors. And he has a hero's kind of journey where sometimes he succeeds and sometimes he fails and sometimes he succeeds again. So that is the essence where Judaism begins. By the way, it would be a surprise to Abraham to find out he was Jewish. <laughs> he would not recognize the term or the concept. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. Uh, The essence of Islam. Buzz, you might have, you restate the question again, because you might have um, kind of frozen there. Please, uh, please explain the essence of your religion in one or two sentences. <clears throat> In the name of Almighty Allah, I seek his help and his refuge. First of all, I would like to explain that Islam is the oldest religion. It started with Adam, Prophet Adam. So Islam is started since the Adam has come into this world from the heaven. So Islam is not a new religion. So according to Islam, we believe that all the prophets were Muslim and they were following the same God, which is Almighty Allah. About Islam, a couple sentences, essentially, Islam is about beauty. Islam is about justice. Islam is about uh, Islam is about uh, mercy. As a Muslim, we believe that Islam is a religion of a mercy, and Islam has been continued from the prophet Adam as 
all the prophets, Noah, Isaiah, and David, all the prophets that we name, we believe in all the prophets. Even we believe in prophet Jesus. And <clears throat> we believe that Jesus was worshiping the God which we believe that Almighty Allah. And our belief about Prophet Isa, Prophet Isa, Jesus, is that he will come back into this world and he will make the whole world again with the peace. There will be no peace until the Jesus Prophet comes back. <clears throat> this is what uh, Islam is about. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Deacon Dan, would you like to follow up? Sure. Um, first, I just wanted to say how humbled and honored I am to, uh, to have been asked to be on this panel with uh, you, uh, Kwai Ibrahim and Rabbi Wolf uh, Prusan. It's, it's a real privilege to be able to, to accompany y'all uh, in this, this evening. Um, it's, it's also difficult to represent, I think, all of Christianity. <laughs> um, you know, uh, there's, there's definitely numerous kind of um, uh, entities, you know, kind of intra-religious differentiation. So it's, it's, it's a little difficult um, to, to be a representative of a, of a whole uh, a faith, but it, it really is a, a humble and a, an honor, a, very humbled <laughs> to be here with you. Thinking about the initial question with like the one or the two sentences that really sums up the essence of Christianity, I would have to say we look to the uh, synoptic gospels, uh, which are Matthew, Mark, and Luke, whenever Jesus presents to us the greatest commandment, right? Um, I'll just read uh, what it says in Matthew 22, um, 37 or 38. It says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul and with all your mind. That is the greatest and first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. And it's it really is then a quest, I think, within Christianity of unpacking what does it mean to love God? What does it mean to love neighbor? Looking at the Greek um, within the uh, Matthew's uh, gospel, the Greek is agathesis, agathesis, uh, pronouncing it <laughs> probably incorrectly, but the root is agape, right? And it's, it's a way in which uh, it's a type of deep, deeper sacrificial love, right? It's, it's different from eros, which is the um, erotic love, and it's different from even the filio, the philos love, which is the fraternal or the uh, brotherly love. It's a deeper love, the, the self-sacrificial love that we're invited to share for God, but it's the same agape that we're invited to share with our neighbor. And so I think within Christianity, that's the essence of what we're invited to do. Well, thank you all very much. And now Christoph will put us into breakout rooms for further discussion. And perhaps you want to offer your own uh, uh, answer to that question, what the essence of uh, your religion is and for de general discussion. We'll be in the uh, breakout room for 15 minutes. Okay, the next question uh, that I'd like to pose is, what do you appreciate most about your religion? And what do you appreciate about the other Abrahamic religions here represented? Uh, this time we'll start off with uh, Kori Abrahim, followed by Rabbi Peretz, and Dan will bring it up in the rear, since we are hosting. The quarry, would you like to answer first? What do you appreciate most about your own religion? And what do you appreciate about the other 
Abrahamic religions. The most we appreciate in Islam is our religion, Islamic faith, the, that we believe in Allah Almighty alone and we believe in the Prophet Muhammad. We, we call it Iman. Iman, we call it belief. This is what we must, you know, we most appreciate in our, for our religion, that we uh, know that Almighty Allah has created us and uh, we know that Almighty Allah has given us the Quran, that that's the most appreciation for us in Islam. And uh, about Abrahamic religion, um, you know, we follow uh, Prophet Abraham too, if you know. Every year we sacrifice um, animal because when the Almighty Allah ordered Prophet Abraham to sacrifice his son to see whether he has more love for Allah, Almighty Allah, or he has more love for his son Ismail. We, we, I think you guys call it Ishmael. So, mm -hmm. so when Almighty Allah ordered the Prophet Abraham to sacrifice his son to see his love for Allah, Almighty Allah, the Prophet Abraham went and he was about to sacrifice his son, but then Almighty Allah tested him and he passed the test. So Almighty Allah put the lamp instead of his son and he removed his son because the Prophet Abraham had, you know, uh, tied his eye. He couldn't see what he's doing. So in the remembrance of Prophet Abraham and Ismail, Almighty Allah has ordered us as a Muslim, a Muslim that we sacrifice one animal per person each year and that we follow that. So we don't have... Uh, you know, we appreciate that from Abrahamic religion. How about Judaism and Christianity? Are there aspects of those that you admire or appreciate? Well, the thing is, uh, I don't read too much about the different religion, you know, uh, but the about the Jesus that we appreciate that he's going to come back and make a peace. That's what we most appreciate, you know, this is the most important thing for us too, that uh, about Jesus that we appreciate him. We believe in him. Without believing in him, we cannot be called a Muslim. Uh, as a Muslim, we must believe that Jesus, Prophet Jesus was, you know, he was a prophet and he has been lifted up. If we don't believe, we can't call be a Muslim. So we must believe in all the prophets from Adam all the way to the Prophet Muhammad, including the Prophet Jesus. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Rabbi Peretz? what you appreciate most about Judaism and what you appreciate about is that your menorah? Yeah, well, it's, it's the fifth night of Hanukkah. Um, I would have made you all latkes, but there's just no time. So what I appreciate about Judaism is that it privileges time over space. So this is the fifth night of Hanukkah. So this is, I guess, yes, this, this is, I am doing this on camera, therefore it's not working. Here we go. Anyways, the point being that we, that Shabbat is every seven days and observed by lighting candles and Rosh Chodesh, the new month, is observed by the new moon. That's every month. And Hanukkah comes every year at this time on the lunar calendar. And therefore I appreciate that I have to be cognizant of time. I have to be aware of where, not just where I am, but when I am and that's that's um that's really cool. So it's time over space, time over matter, time over property, time over real re, real real estate. And what's great about that is that well, no one can tell me it's not daylight. No one can tell me it's not evening. So it's all it gives me a lot of independence. Now, I'm just holding this so don't set my house on fire. Now, 
what I really, what I do appreciate, considering that this, this menorah that's right here is our family menorah from Jerusalem. It's not particularly fancy, but it's the one we bought there 37 years ago when we were living there, is that so much is found in community, that the community is so central in Christianity, all, all forms, as far as I know, um, and so important in Islam, the, the Ummah, the, the idea that God is found in the collective, that spirituality is found in the home and in the community. And I, I appreciate that greatly. Okay. Deacon Dan. All right, thank you. Um, you know, to live a truly authentic Christian uh, life is very difficult. Um, you know, if, we, if we're looking at the two um, invitations to love God and love our neighbor, they're really simple, yet they're really challenging. And so I think what I appreciate about Christianity is that there's, there's a really high ideal um, that is countercultural. It's very difficult, yet if we do it well, that's, that's living out the essence of our faith, right? Um, there's a richness to it as well as a beauty, but it's also a history that's really marred with um, abuses and um, horrors. And I think it reflects, I think, the, the reality of the human story. Um, you know, our life is rich and beautiful, but it's also marred with uh, shortcomings and hurt and pain. And so I think there's a beautiful parallel between what we are invited to experience within the faith with what we experience in our day to day. Uh, so that's what I would appreciate about Christianity. Um, concerning Judaism, um, I would agree with a rabbi, the, the Shabbat is something that I really admire, uh, the, the weekly honoring rest and intentional prayer, you know, in essence, it refreshes leisure while enhancing the ordinary life and, um, and mirroring the creation story and uh, within the Shabbat, uh, the importance of blessing children. And I think that's so important for us to understand that like children are hope. They give us a sense of future and um, allow us to, to pass on our legacy, our tradition to, to the most, um, uh, to, to our children and to our loved ones. For Islam, I really admire uh, the Salat or the, the five daily prayers um, that, that really encompasses, I mean, every single moment of the day, you know? Um, and so facing the Qibla or the direction of the Kaaba in Mecca, I just think is, is a beautiful practice that, that parallels um, Christian's uh, Liturgy of the Hours. But again, the idea of constant prayer, the ethos of praise that permeates the world basically is, is what um, Islam within the Salat um, really, really encourages. Lastly, uh, with Islam, I really admire the notion of hospitality. We saw that last week when um, uh, Sephora joined us. I think uh, Dr. Uh, Papal, you, 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 uh, she joined us, and um, I just thought that was so palpable. You know, welcoming the stranger. It's an essential element that's rooted in the Ab uh, Abrahamic tradition, and uh, I see that very uh, prominently within Islam. Okay, thank you all. And uh, as before, Christoph. Welcome back, everybody. The final question, um, and a painful question, perhaps. What misconceptions about your religion do others have that are painful to you? How do we, and then uh, I don't want, uh, once you get into the breakout rooms after our presenters have addressed, uh, you know, what misconceptions are painful to them. An additional question I'd like you to discuss in the breakout rooms is where do we go from here? 
how do we take uh, what we've learned tonight and where do we go from here to um, you know, establish closer bonds with, with one another. So let's begin with um, our youngest member, Dan, to start, and followed by uh, Kwari Abrahim and with um, Rabbi Peretz. All right, thank you. Um, so one of the things uh, I might have mentioned a little bit earlier, um, you know, Christianity is so diverse. It's not a monolith. And I think, um, you know, for our um, interfaith companions, it's, it's very similar for Islam and Judaism. Um, and so I think it's important to, to understand that there are like intra-religious differences. Um, you know, so within Christianity, we're struggling to, to, to have conversation. We're struggling to see eye to eye, um, you know, on, on things. And, and that's just Christianity. And so I think um, one of the misconceptions maybe is that, that we're all on board, you know, <laughs> with, with a lot. I mean, and I would even say, you know, intra-Catholic right? We're, we're having a lot of disagreements and not seeing eye to eye. And so sometimes I can feel, you know, kind of um, um, kind of a lack of hope because it's like, if we can't even do it amongst Christianity, how are we going to do it with other religions? Um, and so I think uh, that's a misconception that, you know, we, we need to be focused on kind of these other conversations versus trying to work on our own divisions uh, in intra-religiously. I think one of the misconceptions that I, I do find painful is that oftentimes, at least in the United States uh, and maybe even Western countries, white supremacy and white nationalism is closely uh, associated with Christianity. And um, I, I, I've seen that uh, repeatedly. And I think that that does a lot of harm. That does a lot of harm to um, the image of Christianity and, and to people who um, see Christianity as uh, bigoted, biased. Um, it just affirms, right? And, and again, in our group, we were talking about media representation of religions and how that can be even further perpetuating misconceptions uh, within, within our denominations. For me personally, in uh, in regards to Catholicism, and uh, just a trigger warning, if you if you uh, want to um, uh, mute me, but um, uh, it revolves around sex abuse and um, uh, the clergy sex abuse and the air of abuse uh, that is revolving around the, the Catholic clergy. Um, unfortunately. This is a reality that we are still in the midst of. You look at France, they're reeling from their own sex abuse um, report. And, um, you know, so the question, at least for me and for all of us is like, how do we still have our faith, you know, in the midst of this reality, in the, in the midst of this, this painful reality? And a misconception is that we're all going to be like that. All the clergy is going to be like that. And um, that is something that we need to do uh, continually healing from. Okay, uh, Kwari Abrahim. Kwari, would you like to respond? Yes, um, what are the of like your religion do others have that are painful for you? And the most... Uh, most the one that painful is that uh, is spreaded by the media, especially that Islam, you know, spread the hate, you know, uh, terrorism. That's the most uh, hurtful to Islam, you know, right now. In reality, if we look at it, the Islam is the most oppressed. The Muslims are all over, you know, oppressed. But the media has put it in so much different way that it says Islam is spread the terrorism. If you look at Afghanistan, you know, if you look at the Syria, Yemen, you know, uh, Iraq, you know, all these places, they're all Muslims. So if the Islam is the, you know, spread of terrorism, then how come they own getting killed? It doesn't make any sense. So that's the most hurtful, uh, you know, uh, thing for us as a Muslims that, uh, you know, 
it's misconception is that you know uh, Islam is spread the you know terrorism, which is wrong. Uh, so I think uh, we need to you know uh, you know uh, clear on that one. We need to come up with some solution for that one. And uh, that's the most for now uh, is, you know, all over the world, um, according to me, is most hurtful, you know. So what my thing is that if somebody wants to know Islam, they have to go through uh, right people, not just any random people, you know, because some most of the Muslim probably don't even know the whole religion. And if you're going to ask them, you know, they're just going to give you the weird answer. And then, you know, it's so whenever we need something, we go to the people who are, you know, more knowledgeable, you know, who have more study, not just, you know, any people. That's why uh, this, that's where the, all the misconception, you know, starts because we just don't go to the right people to get the answers we just you know the, the media do the same thing they don't go to the you know the people who knows everything about islam they don't go to those people you know they just go to the random here and then some you know grab somebody and then you know start taking their interview so those people don't even know the religion you know those people don't even know how to pray you know so this uh this is the th you know misconception that i would say that we need to you know solve this issue uh somehow and uh looking forward how we can do it is that we have to if we have any question about any religion we have to go to the people who know it that's the only way to solve the issue if we if we if we go to if you don't go to the people who are knowledgeable then it, it's not gonna be you know uh resolve the issue so that's that's according to me uh on this third question um i don't know if dr popa wants to add anything lies we can't we can't hear you dr popa <clears throat> yeah uh what the thing is that it's just generalizing and stereotyping that all muslims are terrorists and that that's something that uh, you know uh, that's that's you know this kind of a behavior is shown in schools and and airports. And uh, my name is Sadiq Popal. Actually, my complete name is Muhammad Sadiq Popal, but I don't write it. As soon as these people say Muhammad, they think, oh my God, uh, it is another Muhammad, and it's probably going to cause some problem. But because it's in my passport, every every time I go to the airport, I'm always searched, and they say the computer randomly selects people. Why is the computer always randomly choose? I feel very special that all the time, every time I go there, uh, I used to teach a class in uh, uh, Southern California. Every weekend I had to fly. And every weekend I was searched thoroughly. Uh, and the computer randomly said, it's not the computer randomly selected. It, is, it was programmed that when you see Muhammad, get him out there and, and, and search him thoroughly. So this is the misconception over generalization stereotyping doesn't help. As um, uh, 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 Dan said, that the same misconception goes against the um, uh, uh, priests and those that they work in churches, that they uh, anyone who goes there, that they think that what? They are involved in some kind of an abuse. Only a limited number of people do something wrong and then everybody gets the blue eye. And that that is the overgeneralization of this. And of course, uh, how we can stop this one is I think, education education and education it's the education that can probably change people's mind not the overgeneralization and the stereotyping and listening to the media who just wants to hype things and 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 make people listen that's what i will uh, my addition to what Hari said said thank you thank you dr Papal. and rabbi peretz well <clears throat> It, it's a litany of woe, I suppose, that this, this question promotes, but there we go. Um, one of the great teachers of the 20th century, Abraham Joshua Heschel, um, put himself on a plane to go to Vatican II, representing only himself. Um, it, uh, it was a 
a professor, rabbi, um, refugee from Nazi Germany, actually not, well, the Nazis, and went to Vatican II to meet with the authors of, the, of, of basically the, uh, the changes going on in the church. They expected him to come and complain about anti-Semitism, which he could have done, considering that he lost most of his family in the Holocaust and a thousand years of persecution in Christian Europe. But instead, he did a remarkable thing. He actually told the Pope that anti-Semitism has not been good for Catholics. It's not been good for, for Christianity. It has not allowed Christianity to reach its highest goals when it perpetuates in the liturgy hatred. That was quite a move. And it was a winning argument in, in, the, in, in the reformation of the Catholic Church, at least, at least in the West. And I would say that this that one of the sadnesses that I feel when I look back at the the, the long and, and sorry um, history of Jewish minorities in Europe, the Mediterranean, the Near East, is that it hasn't gone well for everyone. Everyone has suffered. Because when you become fixated, you can't see things clearly. In other words, you cease to be Abraham, who saw everyone, when you see anyone as demons, or you see anyone as basically fundamental to your existence is their denigration. It hasn't prospered anyone. So when, so to, to go actually to, to, to Kari's observation about Islam, it doesn't help us as Americans, it doesn't help us as human beings to be obsessed um, with the other, to be frightened of people because of their name, it makes us small, deprives us of our vision. So that is, that is, um, that is my response to that question. Amen. Okay, so I Uh, that about winds it up. We uh, covered some very deep stuff in a very short period of time. So uh, there's certainly much more to think about, much more to talk about, much more to do. And uh, as we move forward, where do we go next? Uh, there's a whole uh, menu of things. One thing I would personally love to do is, uh, as, as I mentioned in our breakout room, is to have have get togethers because it's all in the it's all in the you know meeting people as people and and not uh, you know to having theoretical discussions and i i can't imagine anything that i'd love to see more than sort of a a social meal with uh, the Noor mosque and with temple isaiah and and get to know each other as uh, fellow human beings under the one god uh, and i think that would uh, you know, it's kind of like with racism, you know, you can, you can hate a person uh, that you don't know because of their color, but once you know them and they have a name and you know them as a human being, it's, it's much harder to, uh, to hate. So I thank you all for coming tonight and uh, let's all think of ways to, uh, to move forward and to, to do something next in a positive way. So thank you all and good night. I'd like thank you, Buzz. I'd like to thank Buzz for putting this all together. Thank you like all the presenters for taking their time to talk to us. And thank you all for joining us tonight. Uh, the part that was in, in the large group was recorded. And so it will be available on the website if you'd like to revisit it. I wish you all a peaceful night. Happy Advent. And uh, we'll uh, see you this weekend. God bless and thank you all for thank coming. Thank you very much. Thanks. Well, thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.